I know how frustrated you all are that Frankie de Jong is not a Manchester United player. Trust me, I'm equally as frustrated. What I want to do in this video is really try to explain to you the latest developments that we're now understanding about Frankie de Jong's contract at Barcelona and how that really is complicating the whole situation. Please watch this video. I'm going to try and make it as short and as informative as possible because you have to understand this because this really is playing a significant role in this whole de Jong situation. It isn't just about the fee. <laughs> Hell no. This has to be the most complicated transfer I've seen Manchester United get involved in. And because Ten Hag wants him as our number one target, United are not backing away from it. But let me explain it to you in this video. And as I said, if you do learn something by the end of it, please consider subscribing to United People's TV. It'll only take you two seconds. I'd love to have you as part of the community. Let me get into this one. Let me explain it as clearly as I can. Because we're all frustrated. Because what was it? Like a couple of weeks ago, we heard, we heard this. 28th of June. This is from Simon Stone from the BBC. Manchester United have reached a broad agreement with Barcelona for Frankie de Jong. So all of us were hoping, were expecting pretty soon after that to hear and see Frankie de Jong in a Manchester United shirt. Okay, the, the broad fee is, is, agree, is agreed. That's the upfront fee, not the add-ons. And we hear this from, oh, from Fabrizio Romano on the situation. And again, this was a few days ago. This was when? The 3rd of July, three days ago. Manchester United have already agreed that fee. Personal terms not discussed yet, but he will not take that salary reduction. And that's the big thing that Barcelona have been asking Frankie de Jong to do, to take a salary cut to stay at the club. Now, why would they do that? Let me explain these numbers to you here that are developed from this. Marca out in Spain, Marca, sorry, out in Spain, they got access to de Jong's contract. And inside there, and these numbers, we really start to understand the complications. Now, I covered this already in today's live stream, but not everybody can join in in a live stream. That's why I do these shorter, more to the point videos, because I know quite a lot of you enjoy this. Community is not just built on a live audience. There's some people who have busy days and they've only got 10 minutes. That's why I do these shorter videos. I covered it and it's now been covered by the BBC from Simon Stone again. Now, let me explain these to you and why they're so complicated. Well, at least I'll try to. This is Frankie de Jong's contract at Barcelona. Now, what you need to understand here is that the purple line, that's his fixed salary. These are the variables and these yellow lines down here are loyalty bonuses. Now, in the 1920 season there, Barcelona, they made sure that every single player inside the squad took a 12% pay cut. So, but, so the contract that he signed in 2019, de Jong's salary is 14 million euros per year. So everybody had that pay cut in 2019, 20 season, 12.32. Then last year, he dropped his salary to 3 million as a way to help the club. I'll tell you what, these are going to start getting messy. Let me get rid of those. Try to be a little bit neater with the lines. Come on, Sam, sort your life out. Let me just do dots instead. But that one there, he dropped it by 12% because the club asked him to. The club asked every single Barcelona player to. The next year after, he dropped his salary from 14 million euros to 3 million. Now, I know that he's still a millionaire, but let's try and ignore the scale of the numbers and just try to understand that he's taken a significant percentage wage cut there to help Barcelona through the COVID pandemic. It was his way of helping the club. And in the 21-22 season that's just gone now, he also accepted a reduction. So 14 million down to 9 million. Over the course of those two seasons... That's a 16 million euro drop in wages, which, as you can see down here, is now going to be paid back over the next four seasons. One, two, three, four. And you can see the numbers there. From this season onwards, he'll be paid 18 million. The next three seasons, he'll be paid 18. And the season after, he'll be paid 19 million. And look at these as well. The loyalty bonuses that come in this season, he gets nearly 3 million. The year after, a loyalty bonus of nearly 10 million euros. And a final loyalty bonus down there of 3 million euros. And once you start to understand these numbers, you really start to understand how and why this is so complicated. Down here, as you can see, there was a 12% pay cut on all the team, on all the players. 2021 season, he dropped it to 3 million, dropped it to 9 million. Save the club 16 million, which would be paid back to Frankie de Jong over the next four summers. One, two seasons, sorry. One, two, three, four. 
All of that in total would mean that Frankie Dion would get the wage and the salary that he signed with his contract, that he earned, that he deserves, that is his money. But what he's done here, Frankie de Jong has helped Barcelona by taking a big pay cut there and a big pay cut there. Frankie de Jong has saved Barcelona money during the COVID situation with the intention of never leaving the club. I don't think he ever did. I think it was his dream club. He didn't want to leave Barcelona, had no intention of doing it. So he was happy enough to help the club and defer the payments. And instead of that being a situation which... Um, <laughs> I sort of cemented his loyalty at the club. The club is, in fact, going the opposite direction because at this point now, once you add all these numbers together from here in terms of the four the four years of salary that he's now owed, covering the losses that he's made, plus the loyalty bonuses, plus the extra bonuses, these over here, these are to do with the fact that if Barcelona get into the Champions League, uh, there you go, final Champions League, talking about all the bonuses to do with uh, succeeding during the season. Overall, that equivalates to nearly 90 million euros. 90 million euros that will be owed to Frankie de Jong over the next, up to 90 million, over the next four seasons. Now, when players sign contracts and they leave clubs, it's not as if the, the, the club that's buying them assumes that when you buy a player out of a contract, you don't pay off that contract. Or maybe sometimes, I don't know how it works actually. But I presume you don't right? The complication here is down to these two years here. Well, that's more than two years, but you know what I mean. He's owed money there. He's owed 16 million euros from the last two years. And this is all playing part and parcel of why this is such a complicated situation. Because at this point, there's kind of, in my opinion, I would say there's two easy, not easy way out, but there's two obvious ways out of this. Number one, Barcelona pays De Jong all the money he's owed from that season and that season, 16 million, and the loyalty bonuses he would lose because he's, well, he's, not, he's leaving the club. So the loyalty bonuses are kind of irrelevant. It's more to do with that 16 million euros that he is definitely owed in wages. So Barcelona, they could pay up on that. But they're not going to do that. You know they're not going to do that. I know they're not going to do that. I think Frankie De Jong knows that they're not going to do that. So a second solution, I'm not saying it's the right solution. I'm saying that this is definitely probably part of the conversations. Manchester United could well overpay De Jong and cover the wages that he would lose by leaving Barcelona, leaving the loyalty bonuses behind and the wages that he's missed out on. And that shouldn't happen. Now, I've, I've put this out on Twitter earlier and people are like, well, Sam, a third option could be, well, he sues Barcelona. Yeah, he could sue Barcelona. But does De Jong really want to take his, his dream club to court? No, he doesn't. This is just a horrible, horrible situation that is being forced onto Frankie De Jong by this man, Laporta, who's taken over as president of Barcelona and is trying to get the club's finances back in order and forcing these conversations and situations. But I hope that you understand a little bit more about this. I've tried to explain it as, as best I can. It's really complicated. It is. But it's all feeding into this situation. It's all feeding into why we haven't seen this yet. It's all feeding into what is making this so complicated because it's not just about the upfront fee anymore. We know that. Manchester United have agreed that. It's about everything around it. The add-ons. And these are all, this situation is all being probably, I imagine, included in the conversations about these add-ons. How, how are these bonuses paid? How, how is this money paid to De Jong that is owed to him by Barcelona? They're not going to pay it up front. They haven't got the cash for it. We know full well that they're not going to pay it up front. That, this has all been part and parcel of why this whole situation is being delayed. Why this man is the guy leading it. And they're trying to paint Frankie De Jong as the villain by saying he won't take a, a salary cut. Ah, oh, he doesn't love the club. Whereas in reality, Frankie De Jong has done so much to help Barcelona through those COVID years, dropping from 14 million to 3 million. As I said, he's still a millionaire, yes. But that is a, what, a 75% more than that wage cut that he's taking. It's like you taking a 75% wage cut because you like your, your company and you want them to survive. That's what he did. And instead of being rewarded with that, Barcelona are playing hardball, trying to make that wage cut permanent. And therefore, he doesn't get the money that he deserves, that he earned. 
You might not like the money that footballers get paid, but shit, that's just the business that they're in. And Frankie de Jong deserves that money. But instead of it being paid, it's all being convoluted by this whole situation. And I think this is a really critical thing to understand as to why de Jong for Manchester United has been so significantly delayed. And also, and I should have said this at the start of the video, the majority of this, people, is not Manchester United's fault or doing. Sure, we could have agreed the upfront fee a bit quicker. For sure, that's on, that's on United, yes. But all these complications around his contract, on the money owed, it's, all, it's, just, it, it's a consequence of COVID and the complications of that. Of Barcelona and their finances all being screwed. Of everything that it's the years and years and years of overpaying for players and wages culminated into this situation, which is probably going to be the most complicated transfer scenario I think I've ever seen United be involved in or probably ever will. But I hope you understand a bit more about that contract. This is the big clincher for me at this point. And I think this is the real reason why the delay is going on. And I'll be honest. Why I think these delays are going to still go on. Because I don't see a really straightforward solution to that. And I don't know how we get around it. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I don't think United are going to walk away. I think Ten Hag knows. He's spoken with Frankie de Jong. He knows that he'll be happy at Manchester United. He knows that when that transfer does go through. It'll be a great signing. And it'll be a transformative signing. But we have to navigate this complications of this whole deal. And the finances behind it. Ultimately I don't give a shit what the player earns. I don't, give, I don't care how much United pay for it. But the finances are dominating this so much that you can't ignore it. And I hope I've explained it so you understand it a bit more. If I did, drop a like on the video. And I'll see you soon. Hopefully for a bit more of a positive video. But it was important to understand this, I think.